Well, which group of kids? Yeah, which kids? The kids that No. First, we will be joined by Carl. Okay. No, but he means he means where they are. No, I just said. No, he's going for it. Okay, so I think where Oh, yes, thank you. I saw them on the screen, and it was very assisting. I told Eric and Eric and 
No, you know, we didn't meet last no, month. We didn't meet last month. You're yeah. right. No, as far as I know, he's in the office. Ready to roll. School. Yeah. Taking yeah. care of everything. Yes. Oh, okay. Okay. All right. Oh, there it is. Yeah. <laughs> I was just looking around for one. Really good I so appreciate it. I'd like to call the meeting to order. Please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Prior to tonight's meeting, the board met in executive session to discuss information that if disclosed in public would be reasonably likely to impair the effectiveness of school safety or create a reasonable likelihood of jeopardizing the security of a building, resource, infrastructure, facility, or information storage system. During the executive session, the board also discussed with council information and strategy related to litigation or issues about which identifiable complaints are expected to be filed. The board is also scheduled to meet an executive session after tonight's public meeting to discuss an employment or personnel matter. Mrs. Anuze, could you please call the roll? Ms. Andrews. Present. Mrs. Cooper. Here. Ms. Dad. Here. Ms. Finley. Here. Mr. Frank. Here. Mr. Good. Here. Mr. Hamilton. Here. Mrs. Lynch. Here. Ms. Zitch. Here. Nine members present. Ms. Andrews and Mrs. Lynch present via telephone. Thank you. Dr. Reljack, I see some wonderful young guests here tonight. We do. They're actually going to speak at our superintendent's report oh, okay. as part of our Lens on Learning. Okay, great. All right, uh, Fox Chapel Leadership Council, Alexandra Shroff and Avanti Muvala, please come up. Good evening, members of the school board, Dr. McCommons and Dr. Rel Jack. As committee chairs for community outreach, we are excited to share what we've done so far this school year. Last month, we held our annual school-wide food drive. 24 members of community outreach transported all the goods to the Greater Pittsburgh Community Food Bank, where we spent the morning volunteering. By the end of our shift, we packed 1,140 boxes of food for senior citizens in the Greater Pittsburgh community, which equaled 40,000 pounds of food. After Thanksgiving, we are volunteering at the H.G. Hines Veterans Hospital. This is the first time post-COVID that we are able to return for our annual trip to decorate the hospital and visit the veterans spreading holiday cheer. Many of the classes, especially the freshmen, have been creating ornaments and cards for us to share with the veterans. It is our goal to give back and improve our community. We think it's important for our peers to have that opportunity to get involved and serve our community. So thank you for giving us the chance to share with you tonight. Thank you. Okay, Dr. Rel Jack. Superintendent's report. Sure, we have many people here tonight for our Lens on Learning and we're so glad to see so many people. Um, tonight's Lens on Learning presentation will focus on the unified arts curriculum at the elementary level, as well as an artistic extracurricular opportunity in which some of our students participate. First, this evening, we will be joined by Kerr Elementary School fourth grade teachers, Mrs. Tiffany Hess and Mrs. Erica Yeager, and some of their students who will showcase the Creative Dramatics group. This group is composed of fourth and fifth grade students who meet after school weekly from September through December. And Kerr Elementary partners with the Pittsburgh Public Theater for the Creative Dramatics session. Each session engages students in creative exploration and storytelling. Later, we will also be joined by O'Hara Elementary School art teachers, Mrs. Jennifer Reynolds and Mrs. Dina Stipitich, who will help showcase 
the Unified Arts at O'Hara Elementary. Unified Arts, as we call it in our school district, comprises computer science, library, art, physical education, and music. And the O'Hara Unified Arts team has produced a video to highlight the good work taking place in all of these disciplines. Uh, Mrs. Reynolds and Mrs. Stipetich, uh, Stipetich, excuse me, will then introduce the fifth grade students who led the creation of the district's holiday card, and they will be talking about the experience and having uh, the opportunity to engage in the card making process. So we thought these presentations would be a great opportunity to exemplify our strategic vision pillars of passion as well as community. And so I'll turn this over first to our current third grade team, Mrs. Hess and Mrs. Yeager, and you and your students may showcase their talents. Hello, Dr. Raljak, uh, Dr. McCommons, and all members of our Fox Chapel School District School Board. We welcome you to Kerr. Uh, for many years, myself and Mrs. Yeager have partnered with the Pittsburgh Public Theater um, to offer this awesome extracurricular program, Creative Dramatics, to our fourth and fifth grade students. Um, during their time at Creative Dramatics, students spend their time in this gym uh, practicing and expressing their creativity through their voice and movement. Together, we do many fun activities, but perhaps the most exciting is what you'll get a sneak peek of tonight is learning a Shakespearean play. Here to talk more about this exciting program, we have welcomed Parag Goel and Jenny Malarkey. They are here from the Pittsburgh Public Theater to tell you a short bit about their program before we perform for you. Hi, everybody. It's so wonderful to be here. Thank you for having us here tonight. Uh, my name is Parag Shanti Goel. I serve as the Director of Education and Engagement at Pittsburgh Public Theater. Yes, and hi, I'm Jenny Malarkey. I'm one of the teaching artists for the Creative Dramatics Program. Yes, um, and if you don't know about Pittsburgh Public Theater, it is located in the heart of downtown Pittsburgh. Um, our mission statement at the public is to provide artistically diverse theatrical experiences of the highest quality. Part of our mission statement is also education and outreach um, in order to share our resources, uh, enrich the community, and diversify our audiences. Um, there are many education programs that we have, but I think at the heart of it, one of the legacy programs that is the most exciting is the Creative Dramatics Program. Um, it is a collaborative performing arts experience in which students are encouraged to express themselves through speaking, acting, and performing, uh, often borrowing plot lines from Shakespeare or other classic stories. Students are introduced to creative play acting, breathing, and focusing exercises, as well as basic storylines. Uh, and for most of the students, this is their initial exposure to Shakespeare, and we believe uh, the beginning of a lifelong interest. Uh, Pittsburgh Public Theater's Creative Dramatics Program has been introducing students to performance for over two decades, instilling the principles of focus, self-confidence, self-expression, acceptance, tolerance, and teamwork. Uh, fourth and fifth grade students from six partner schools uh, engage in this 10-week program during which they learn and perform a work inspired from a central piece and make it creative and dramatic <laughs> uh, with ideas from their own hearts and minds. And who better to tell you a little bit more about what you're about to see than our lead uh, teaching artist and creative dramatics associate, Jenny. Thank you. So um, the students this year were inspired by Shakespeare's play, A Midsummer Night's Dream, which the Pittsburgh Public Theater actually recently did their own production of in a very fun and unconventional way. So the challenge for the students this year was to find a unique way to bring about that storytelling. So the scene that you are about to see in it, we have a very mischievous woodland creature called Puck, who has found a magical flower. Now, that magical flower, when it is applied to the eyes of someone who might be sleeping or dozing, when that person opens their eyes, the first thing they see, they fall in love with. Now, mischievous Puck might have a little too much fun with this and likes to play some jokes and some games and might make some mistakes in this scene. Also, you'll see some students exploring how to be a narrator and helping to guide the story that way. And keep an eye out for some gossipy trees who might help tell the story as well. <laughs> so without further ado, please enjoy Creative Dramatics and A Midsummer Night's Dream. All right, students. In the mic. You can talk right in the mic. Okay. 
Along came Helena, red in the face. She saw Lysander lying in a heap and rushed to him. Is he dead? Or Peck replied Lysander as he leapt to his feet, looking at Helena. <laughs> Puck had seen at once what he'd done. This was not the man. He'd picked the wrong one. But Puck was crafty. He knew he could fix it. He'd charm both, so Demetrius he hit. Now both loved Helena, brought on by the flower stroke. She couldn't believe it. <coughs> Hermia wakes to find quite a mess. She cries with distress. Thank you all, and thank you to our, especially to our creative dramatics students. I can't wait to see the rest of that. I don't know about our board. Now I'm intrigued, so I want to see that. Um, next, I will uh, let uh, Mrs. Reynolds and Mrs. Stipetich uh, discuss, or at least show our video, and um, we'll go from there. Hello, board, and um, Dr. Reljack and Dr. McCommons. Thank you for having us here this evening. I am Jennifer Reynolds. I am art teacher at O'Hara Elementary School, as well as part-time traveling art teacher here at Kerr Elementary School. So it has been a pleasure. Um, oh, and Dina Stipetich. Nice <laughs> Miss Dina Stipetich is joining us um, here at O'Hara for the first time as well. And it has been a pleasure over the years as art teacher here, um, not only working with an awesome art team from K to 12, but really getting to work with our students in unique ways, such as the holiday card. And for those of you who may be unfamiliar with the holiday card, it is actually a handmade work of art done by our students K to 12. It rotates through the different school buildings every year. And so this year it was O'Hara's turn to create the artwork for the card. And it is not hard, but it is hard finding students to work on the card because we have so many talented um, artists and, oh, at O'Hara. Um, but Miss Delphina Chen and Lena Duggery were our students this year, and if you girls want to come on up, that we chose because of their talent and their willingness to share their talent. So this is the unveiling of the artwork for that holiday card, and then they're just going to share a little bit about their experience with you, and then you will see the rest of our team at O'Hara on video. So I'll let you girls take it on. And mm, beautiful. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Why don't you turn it around? Yes, there. So everybody else can do it. Thank you. And this is a student-driven project. So the sketching, the planning, the execution was all these girls. So go ahead. Share what you like. Hello, my name is Lena Duggery, and I'm a fifth grader at O'Hara Elementary School. I was very excited to have done to have the chance to work on the holiday card with Miss Reynolds and Delphina. We worked together and used different mediums in making the card. I'm very proud of how it turned out. I love my art classes at O'Hara. I'm so happy that we have it twice a week. In fact, I wish we had it every day. Art is a break from the other less exciting classes, like in my opinion, math. I love the chance to use my imagination and creativity. We get to do all sorts of different projects and Miss Reynolds makes sure that all the class is never same and never boring. I've always loved art and being creative. My mom even made me an art studio in our house and I usually stay up late sketching in my notebook. I'm so glad that at O'Hare I get even more chances to do all of this. I hope that you enjoy the card. Thank you. <laughs> Delphina said that she's going to opt out of actually speaking, but she was able to present for us this evening. 
So again, we thank you for all of the opportunities um, at all of our buildings to give our students enriched art programs. That is truly something special that I think we have here at Fox Chapel area. So mm -hmm. thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So we are so thrilled to be able to offer so many art experiences and all of the arts in our creative dramatics, in art, in music, in computer science, library, physical education. And our unified arts program is strong, not only at the elementary level, but throughout. And um, we're just so grateful to have so many students and staff here and their families to share in that. And um, you amaze us every day. So we are so thrilled to be able to offer those experiences and, and watch them uh, because they're such an integral part of our entire program, the academics, the arts, the athletics, and the citizenship. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you, students and teachers. That was really wonderful to see. Anything else, Dr. Raljak? Nothing else from me. I didn't know if any board members have any questions about it. And if not, that's okay. All right. 
All right. Well, we look forward to seeing our holiday card soon uh, in production. I saw a, a preview of it and it was pretty exciting. And uh, I can't wait to see some more cre creative dramatics. And uh, I don't know, I always end up in one of those classes when I visit the buildings, uh, either playing an instrument or dancing <laughs> or doing something fun. So hopefully I'll see all of you soon. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> All of you are welcome to stay, but we certainly understand that bedtime comes soon. And if you need to, to go, we certainly do. Thank you. Um, Thank you. Great job, everyone. Awesome. Get that. And that concludes our superintendent's report this evening. Okay, thank you. <clears throat> Mr. Jeffrey, is there a solicitor's report? No report this evening. Okay. Uh, could I have a motion to approve the minutes of the regular business meeting dated October 9th, 2023? So moved. Ron Frank seconds. Thank you. Any questions or comments on the minutes? Mrs. Anuza, could you please call the roll? Ms. Andrews. Oh, I can't hear you. Ms. Andrews. I don't know if she can hear. Ms. Andrews, we're voting to approve the minutes. Cut. Your vote. She, she said, said yes. She said yes. Thank you. <laughs> Mrs. Cooper. Yes. Ms. Dad. Yes. Ms. Finley. Yes. Mr. Frank. Yes. Mr. Good. Yes. Mr. Hamilton. Yes. Mrs. Lynch. Yes. Ms. Sitch. Yes. Motion carries. Thank you. It's time for our first public comment period, and I'm told there are no commenters. Okay. <clears throat> New business, facilities, and transportation. We have uh, no action requested on that. Mr. Hamilton, the finance report, please. Yes, on the finance report tonight, we have eight items to approve. Item one is disbursements from Fund 10 for October 2023. General fund disbursements from Fund 10 in the amount of $7,498,905.43. Item two is the finance report for September 2023. The finance report for September 2023 is acknowledged and filed for audit as attached. Item three, budget transfers. Budget transfers for 2023, 2024 approved as attached. Item four, student activity financial reports. The first quarter 2023, 2024, middle school and high school student activity financial reports are acknowledged and filed for audit as attached. Item five, award of bids, industrial embroidery machine. The administration is authorized to award the following bid for an industrial embroidery machine at the high school to Hirsch Solutions Incorporated for $24,745. Item six, award of bids athletic. The administration is authorized to award the following bids for 2023-2024 school year, athletic suspension. Supplies bid Springs BSN Sports LLC for $815.22, Century Sports Incorporated $5,550.98, MF Athletics $1,192, Natali Sports Sporting Goods $5,426.68, Pyramid School Products $4,167.90. Item 7, Close Bank Account. Approve the clo closing the Fox Hill Area <coughs> School District bank account with West, West Banco and move all funds into other investment accounts already held by the district. And item, <coughs> item eight, services support proposal. Accept the amended proposal of services for the district safety and security system. There is no cost associated with the proposal. I move on all eight items. Ron Frank seconds. <coughs> Thank you. Any questions or comments on these eight items? I'll just acknowledge again uh, the fine work of our administration and moving accounts away from West Banco into a new one. That's the culmination of a long RFP process that I know is beneficial to our district in the long mm -hmm. run. So congratulations. I feel like there should be some chanting or something. <laughs> um, but then um, I did um, 
I have one more question. Nope, I got it. Never mind, that was it. I'm good. Okay. Anyone else? Mrs. Anusic, could you please call the roll? Mrs. Cooper? Yes. Ms. Dad? Yes. Ms. Finley? Yes. Mr. Frank? Yes. Mr. Good? Yes. Mr. Hamilton? Yes. Mrs. Lynch? Yes. Ms. Sitch? Yes. Ms. Andrews? Yes. Motion carries. Thank you. Mrs. Cooper, could you read the instruction report, please? Yes, I'll be moving on five items. Number one is the January 2024 graduates. There's a group of students here that, that are eligible for mid-year graduation subject to final approval by the high school lead principal. Congratulations, students. Number two is to approve the contract as attached between the district and junior achievement of Western Pennsylvania for fourth grade students to participate in JA BizTown for the 23-21 school year at an estimated cost of $8,025 um, and authorize the administration to exec execute uh, the contract on behalf of the district. This is the renewal. Um, number three is to approve the staffing agreement as attached between the district and Ad Education Inc. to provide healthcare professionals to the district effective November 13, 2023. This is a new service. And number four, approve the student education agreement as attached between the school district and River Academy of Excellence to provide services to an unnamed student through the 23-24 school year. This is a new service. Number five is to approve a stipulated adjudication as presented. Move on those five items. Second. Thank you. Any questions or comments? The BizTown program seems like it's becoming a new fixture of our district. I hear incredible things about it. I mean, it's not new, but it seems more and more a part of the fabric of our district. Is, that, um, is there, that's not like grant limited or anything. That's a part of our general operating or like overall budget that we piece together every year. Is that correct? I'm sorry, for is the it, junior is, achievement? Uh, no, for the, uh, the, yeah, the junior achievement. Yeah, yes, it was piloted last year and based on overwhelming feedback, it has been worked into a regular feature now. Okay, great. Yes. Excellent. Um, Congratulations, graduates. Any other questions or comments? Mrs. Anusic, will you please call the roll? Ms. Dad, yes. Ms. Finley, yes. Mr. Frank, yes. Mr. Good, yes. Mr. Hamilton, yes. Mrs. Lynch, yes. Ms. Zitch, yes. Ms. Andrews, yes. Mrs. Cooper, yes. Motion carries. Thank you. Mr. Frank, could you read the legislation and policy report, please? Yes, I would move the first reading of the following revised policies. Uh, number 006, meetings. Number 137, home education programs. Number 137.1, .1, extracurricular participation by home education students. Number 216.1, supplemental discipline records. Number 223, use of motor vehicles. Number 227, controlled substance, paraphernalia. Number 251, students experiencing homelessness, foster care, and other educational instability. Number 718, service animals in the schools. Number 800, records management. Number 805, emergency preparedness and response. And number 830, security of computerized personal information slash breach notification. I would also move for the following, for the first reading on new policies. Number 137.2, participation in co-curricular activities and academic courses by home education students. Number 137.3, participation in career and technical education programs by home education students. And number 830.1, data governance, storage, security. I would move all those items for the first reading. Second. Thank you. Any questions or comments on the policies? I was just wondering, I was looking at um, the controlled substances and paraphernalia um, policy, and uh, there was an added number seven substances that when ingested cause a physiological effect that is similar to the effect of a controlled substance as defined by law or state, state or federal law. I was just wondering if somebody could define what an example of that. I was just trying to understand what that was pertaining to. Sure, I, I can attempt to do that. 
Uh, I don't think I can cover all of it, but there are some substances that would be legal for the way that they are supposed to be used, but when used in different ways, they could um, cause effects that would be harmful to students or harmful to um, people, um, you know, household cleaners and things like that. Following along the, okay. oh, yeah, following along to Vanessa's comment, um, is, is this language recommended by other state agencies or is this something that we could piece together? This is recommended by PSBA. Okay. Only because I, I think to your point then of um, misuse versus like, so even, even prescription or non-prescription medications, except for those, you know, like uh, the item eight seems to be related to misuse, but item seven actually could apply to a lot of things, even an over-caffeinated beverage, um, but with, that would be within the original intended use of the product. And so I'm wondering if that would be something that the committee would consider revisiting. I think it would be dependent upon the way that something is being used um, more than anything else. So there has to be context for it. There also has to be um, some information. When we apply a policy, we have other administrative regulations as to how we go about um, doing those kinds of things um, and, and understanding what it would be. Well, because this relates to possession, it actually, because, because the authority require, like allows for possession as being a condition upon which there'd be action taken by the school, then that argument doesn't hold because you could possess something and as long as you use it correctly, it would be fine. Um, or if you, and if you didn't use it correctly, it wouldn't be fine. Except here it says just possessing it that had the potential for misuse could be grounds um, for, a, for a student to receive disciplinary action. And so I, I think that's where I would say that um, controlled substances might need to be defined more specifically or possession would need to be removed from that or applied only to those things for which the only intended possible use is unlawful. This is just something that I've cared deeply about, and so it's something where I am where I think the, the material specifics of that matter a tremendous amount on a case by case basis. They certainly matter on a case by case basis. This is just in the definition section. It doesn't necessarily say possession. It would be in in what we're defining as a controlled substance, um, and certainly they do matter. But we also have many you know many regular household uh, materials that can be used in inappropriate ways that um, can become, that, that wouldn't necessarily be something you would expect to see in a school in a normal learning day. Um, I think that that's some of it as well as the intent. So as to defining those things very specifically, um, we can certainly go back to PSBA. The, the one concern is that sometimes those things change very quickly. And so uh, a very narrow definition could be difficult. Yeah, I know I completely understand that. And if it weren't for the authority section of this, that, that is more specific about, yeah, the intent or the, the context mm -hmm. in which a, a material or a substance is discovered, then I would be a little more at ease about it. Um, but I would encourage the committee to consider that um, before a, a new approval, since this is this is still a first reading, isn't it? Yes. Yep. Okay. So, are you wanting to suggest that this goes back to the committee? I would suggest it, but I think I may be the only one that would suggest that. I think you would have to. Um, make a motion to separate it out for us to uh, vote on. Okay. You can make a motion to refer, right? Yeah, I believe I can. So I can make a mo I, I move to refer this back to committee, yes? A yeah. sec I'll second that. Thank you. So now we can discuss that. Any, yes, any discussion on moving this back to committee? So, okay. I, I also suggest uh, what Dr. Reljack was alluding to whenever it comes to policy, where this is the policy, we also have our administrative regulations. And I believe um, what you're referring to, Ms. Zist, you know, the possible use of a controlled substance by, by a student is indicated there is no evidence of a violation of law or school regulations. So I think what you're trying to get at is that it could be in the possession as long as you're following the school's protocol and intent uh, with that controlled substance, you have some protections. It's when they're, that's where Dr. Reljack was referring to, the, uh, about how it may be discovered, how was the intent was to be used, 
the, the factual information that comes around whenever it's discovered. So I do think we have uh, a plan, but if, if you prefer that we, uh, we do have a, a governance meeting tomorrow evening, we could revisit and look at it with the entire committee. Yeah, I mean, to me, it does seem like there is a potential uh, <clears throat> unintended consequence with how this is worded because we define uh, we, we define a controlled substance to be something which uh, is you know otherwise not a controlled substance, but we define it, and then we the next on the next page, stop the next page, we uh, the board prohibits uh, students from possessing any of the things above. So uh, we don't want to set up these kinds of traps, I don't think. Um, and so I don't know if there's a, a, a better way to word that or a clearer way to word that. I mean, the rest of them all seem fine to me, uh, especially when we talk about the lookalike drugs, that all seems reasonable. Um, but um, like substances that are not meant to be ingested, but that are otherwise innocuous, um, we uh, this would say we are prohibiting them from having that, which seems kind of, inadvertently broad right my i think my concern is there could be very real like possessions accusations made against children who have no idea what they're holding or how it could be misused. yeah and, and i mean i don't i i, I don't think that the yeah. <clears throat> you know i have no reason to believe the current administration would would do that but um you know we, we would like to have a, a policy that is uh, a long-term policy if you have a suggestion for changing that language um, just put it in an email to us, and we'll look at it. To, we'll, we'll look at uh, in totality tomorrow. Great, thank you. Um, we still have to vote on it, though. Right? Yeah. Yep. So the motion is to refer policy number two twenty seven controlled substances paraphernalia back to the governance and policy committee. Do we have to do anything with the first motion? Okay. No, well, we could, this yeah. is the current motion. Okay. Right, the current okay. motion is to refer. Because we haven't we yet. Have a, a motion to refer uh, policy number 227 back to the governance committee uh, by Ms. Zitch, seconded by Mr. Phil. Mm -hmm. right. So we have to vote on that first, right? right. Okay. All right, Mrs. Anuzic, could you please call the roll? Mr. Frank. Yes. Mr. Good. Yes. Mr. Hamilton. Yes. I'm sorry, yes. Yes. Mrs. Lynch. Yes. Ms. Sitch. Yes. Ms. Andrews. Yes. Mrs. Cooper. Yes. Ms. Dad. Yes. Ms. Finley. Yes. Motion carries to refer 227 back to the governance committee. Thank you. Now we go back to the previous motion to move on the remaining items. Any other uh, questions or comments? Could you just restate that motion uh, so that it's clear? Mr. Frank? Yeah, I would move all the items with the exception of 227 um, for their first reading. Thank you. Mrs. Anusic, could you please call the roll? Since that's a new motion, does it need a second? We, we already had both. Do we have a second? Yeah. But speak up, y'all. Okay. <laughs> does it need a second? No. I thought it I mean, a, a new different motion second. than his first motion. His first motion included all of them. I thought he just so said we had both. We have a, oh, okay. we have a no, motion did we have a second. second. Oh, we have a second. Did somebody second, second that one? Oh. Okay. 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 Yeah, we couldn't hear Katie at this end nope. table. <laughs> it's, it's not a new motion. It's not a new motion. the motion with the previous vote, the so it's the same motion. But the original motion included 220. Yeah, but we revised it by the vote we just okay. took. Without ever closing the first motion. Because okay. we were inside the prior motion, okay. it's revised. <laughs> okay. <laughs> that makes sense. Okay. Mrs. Anusic, could you call the roll? Ms. Finley? Yes. Mr. Frank? Yes. Mr. Good? Yes. Mr. Hamilton? Yes. Mrs. Lynch? Yes. Ms. Sitch? Yes. Ms. Andrews? Ms. Andrews? Yes. Mrs. Cooper? Yes. Ms. Dad? Yes. Motion carries. 
Thank you. Ms. Zich, could you read the personnel report, please? Yes. Um, I move on the following items. Uh, item one, resignation administration, the resignation of Matthew J. Harris, EDD, Executive Director of Secondary Education and Instruction for the Fox Chapel Area School District due to retirement. Educational support, the resignation of Susan L. George, Instructional Assistant at O'Hara Elementary School due to retirement. Food services, the resignation of Amanda L. Ramirez, Food Services Employee at Dorseyville Middle School due to personal reasons. Supplemental Contracts Athletic, the resignation of Matthew M. McClare, Swimming uh, High School Second Assistant due to personal reasons. The resignation of John T. Stout, Softball Middle School Assistant due to personal reasons. Um, appointments, Professional, Amelia C. Dickinson is approved as a Special Education Teacher at Kerr Elementary School, available due to the retirement of Terry Kazirsky. Food Services, Christine D. Weber is approved as a permanent part-time food services employee at Dorseyville Middle School. Supplemental Contracts Athletic. The following athletic supplemental contracts are approved. Sean R. Baldus, um, uh, Intramural Basketball Boys, Fairview, Keith Danino, Danino, you know, um, sorry, Swimming High School Second Assistant, Jason Jablon, Basketball Girls Middle School Assistant, Matthew R. McClare, Swimming High School Head, John T. Stout, Softball Middle School Head, Brendan Urso, Basketball Girls Middle School Assistant. Following athletic, athletic supplemental contract is approved. Caitlin Paul, Volleyball Boys Middle School Assistant. Supplemental contracts, non-athletic. The following non-athletic su supplemental contracts are ratified. Uh, Nathan W. Hart, Spring Musical Choreographer. Zachary J. Piper, Orchestra Director Elementary. Elizabeth A. Scholes, Band Orchestra Trip Healthcare. Kirsten M. Shero, Choral Director Elementary Kerr. Miranda M. Zarlino, Choral Director Elementary Kerr. The following non-athletic supplemental contract is ratified effective with the first. Terry A. Barnett, Mentor Teacher, O'Hara Elementary School. Um, and for leaves, professional Allison E. De La Torre, elementary teacher at Fairview Mil Elementary School is approved for child rearing and adoption leave. Michaela L. Dave Francesca, elementary teacher at O'Hara Elementary School is approved for child rearing and adoption leave. Shannon R. Frick, elementary teacher at O'Hara Elementary School is approved for child rearing and adoption leave. Leave replacements, professional Skylar L. Biseglia is ratified as a leave replacement special education teacher at O'Hara Elementary School. This position is available due to the ch child rearing leave of Chrissy Ferret. Paragonio. Nicholas A. Luciano is ratified as a leave replacement teacher at O'Hara Elementary School. This position is available due to increased enrollment. Um, and five, termination. Um, the termination between employee X and Fox Chapel Area School District effective August 25th is approved. I move on these five items with all of this subsequent and associated salary and effective dates as included in the agenda. Second. Thank you. Any questions or comments on the personnel items? Mrs. Anuzik, will you please call the roll? Mr. Good. Yes. Mr. Hamilton. Yes. Mrs. Lynch. Yes. Ms. Zitch. Yes. Ms. Andrews. Yes. Mrs. Cooper. Yes. Ms. Dad. Yes. Ms. Finley. Yes. Mr. Frank. Yes. Motion carries. Thank you. Mr. Good, could you read the operations and cooperative services report, please? Yes, I have uh, three items to move on. The first is to approve the agreement as attached between the Fox Chapel Area School District and Verizon COPPA, effective November 14, 2023 through December 31st, 2027, which will allow the Fox Chapel Area School District to purchase Verizon services at a reduced rate through CoStars. This is renewal. Uh, number two, D'Agostino Electronic Services Incorporated contract approved the contract as attached between Fox Chapel Area School District and D'Agostino Electronic Services Incorporated for migration of district phone service to new platform effective number 14th, 2023 through project completion at a cost of $7,720.09 in addition to a recurring monthly charge of $937.01 and a one-time service charge of $602.85. This is a replacement for a service. Number three, approve the Allegheny Intermediate Unit Mutual Assistant Group MOU as attached between the Fox Chapel Area School District and participating schools and authorize the superintendent to execute the MOU on behalf of the district. This is a new MOU under which districts may request or provide resources and personnel in the event of an emergency or other crisis. And I move on th these three items. Second. Thank you. Any questions or comments on these items? The D'Agostino Electronic Services, that's just the fee for migration, not the fee for service. Is that right? 
Like it's not the fee for the phone services, it's just the fee to migrate the services. It's the fee to migrate the services and then they will be uh, managing the phone service in the future. Oh, okay. That's a monthly fee, but that replaces another monthly fee? It does, it replaces okay. a current um, provider. Thank you. Any other questions? Okay, Mrs. Anusik, will you please call the roll? Mr. Hamilton. Yes. Mrs. Lynch. Yes. Ms. Zitch. Yes. Ms. Andrews. Yes. Mrs. Kerr. Yes. Ms. Dagg. Yes. Ms. Finland. Yes. Mr. Frank. Yes. Mr. Good. Yes. Motion carries. Thank you. It's time for our second public comment period. And it looks like we have one person signed up. Paula Mach Machman. I'm sorry if I mispronounced that. Please come on up. You'll, you will have three minutes to speak. I'll let you know when you have one minute left. Thank you. This is the first time I come here, so everything is very new to me, but I will be brief. I just want to know what is the difference between, I, I don't see when I was reading the, the parents book, I didn't see a difference between cyberbullying and bullying. And right now, the cyberbullying is increasing tremendously, and it's affecting many kids emotionally, and it's not only affecting the kids, but also the families. And when I started doing more research online, there are specific rules that apply to cyberbullying, which is not the same as bullying. And I would like to know how is that being addressed, or, or if there are any thoughts of any changes um, happening and um, it's all I also read a little bit about the PAS 2709 uh, which are all the, the uh, consequences that are attached to a specific cyberbullying since this is your first meeting I'll let you know that typically we don't answer questions in this forum um, but it's something for you to think about since I, it's not on the, on the student parent handbook and I, I was specifically looking for, for that. And I would also um, direct you to perhaps speak to the principal of whatever building your student or students are in to help with some clarification. And I, thank you. I appreciate you bringing this to my attention. Thank you. For the board. thank you. Thank you. Okay, Fox Chapel Educators Association. Thank you. Uh, time for board comments. Um, I'd like to point out that next month is our reorganization meeting and we will be voting on our leadership position. So if anyone is interested in a leadership position, please <laughs> please let myself or uh, Dr. Reljack know and we will be happy to uh, discuss that with you. Also, I see several students here tonight, uh, which I'm excited to see, and you're probably wondering why are we not talking about the stuff on the agenda, and I just want you to know that we typically have two meetings per month, and the first meeting, which was last Monday, is when we discuss and ask a lot of questions about the items on the agenda, and the second meeting tonight is where we vote on those items. So if you're wondering what's happening, I thought I'd give you a little explanation. And I'm so glad all of you came. I assume you're in Mrs. Klein's class. And uh, <laughs> we appreciate your attendance. You can stream that discussion on the Fox Chapel Area School District YouTube channel. So if you do want to see all the discussion that led to the voting this week. It's only yes. two hours long. I know it's really exciting, <laughs> but. <laughs> okay, Mr. Frank, do you have any comments tonight? Yes. Uh, this week uh, starts winter sports. And so uh, we all hope that they have a great season, uh, at least as great as the, as the girls soccer team who finished in the top eight in the state and WPL champions. And also I wanted to mention there's a governance committee meeting tomorrow 
in the, the administration wing resource room if anybody would like to attend. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Finley. Um, congratulations again to the girls. Uh, it was it was a incredible journey they had, and I know they were down to nothing, and they came back. So don't ever think you didn't do well, ladies. It was a fantastic job throughout the entire season. Um, thank you for bringing the attention to the cyberbullying and bullying. We will certainly start discussing that and bring that up for governance probably come January because we do not have a meeting for that in December. Um, and thank you very much. Thank you. Mrs. Lynch, do you have any comments tonight? Um, yeah, I would just say also thank you to our uh, parent commenter. Um, the board does currently have policy 249, which talks about cyberbullying and bullying specifically. So I would, I would encourage taking a look at that. And if there are um, things that you find in this exploration, sort of talking with your own building or and or looking at this policy, please reach out to the board and superintendent and uh, let us know your concerns and uh, give us the opportunity to sort of uh, take a look at those and address those and uh, be able to um, continue the work that the board does to protect our students. I know it's really important and it's something that we value greatly. I also just wanted to say I was really impressed with and always excited by the amount of uh, creativity and uh, imagination and place for the arts that exists in our school district. It makes me excited to see uh, students across all ages and um, parts of our buildings participating in that way. It really does have high value in so many parts of student and child development and uh, always makes me very excited to to witness that so thanks everybody thank you uh, ms andrews hi everybody i am so sorry i'm not there in prison i have to work tonight um ms summer's night dream is one of my most beloved shakespeare plays um so I really, you know, want to also piggyback on on um, that and just say uh, I love the arts and I'm very proud of the students in the district. And um, thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Hamilton. I'd just like to congratulate um, the, my four other colleagues uh, who won re-election last uh, week uh, and thank all the voters who came out uh, on an off-year election. Off-year elections are important and voted and it's an honor to serve for another four years. Thank you, Mrs. Cooper. I'll give a shout out for the academic committee that meets on <laughs> Wednesday. Um, and also it was great to see the creative dramatics program. I had a kid participate at Kern. It is just a really neat and unique um, experience for the kids. And it's kind of one of the fun things to watch as a parent too, as tonight it was very fun, so. Thank you, Ms. Zitch. I'll say again, um, congratulations to our upcoming mid-year graduates. I know it's like the time um, and um, for everyone else, happy Thanksgiving, be grateful, enjoy it, eat lots um, and be healthy. Thank you, Mr. Good. Yes, it's great to uh, come out to Kerr and see all the students. Uh, so thank you so much for that. Uh, and I'll point out on the 21st, we have the uh, Projects and Planning Committee uh, meeting. Um, so uh, definitely welcome to come to those as well. Uh, I think the committees are pretty, uh, they're pretty interesting. They're, they're a much smaller uh, set of people and we have uh, pretty in-depth discussions about all sorts of things, so thank you. Yeah, we'll have to get Mrs. <laughs> to start sending you guys to the committee meetings. Yeah. <laughs> I like the real. Yeah, exactly. Okay, could I have a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Meeting adjourned. <clears throat>